whether it is outright government expropriation, farmers being outbid by cities, or cities simply drilling deeper wells than farmers can afford, the world's farmers are losing the water war. They are faced with not only a shrinking water supply in many situations but also shrinking share of that shrinking supply. Slowly but surely, fast-growing cities are siphoning water from the world's farmers even as they try to feed some 70 million more people each year. Scarcity crossing national borders. Historically, water scarcity was a local issue. It was up to national governments to balance water supply and demand. Now this is changing as scarcity crosses national boundaries via the international grain trade. Since it takes 1,000 tons of water to produce one ton of grain, as noted earlier, importing grain is the most efficient way to import water. Countries are, in effect, using grain to balance their water books. Similarly, trading in grain futures is in a sense trading in water futures. After China and India, there is a second tier of smaller countries with large water deficits Algeria, Egypt, Mexico, and Pakistan. Algeria, Egypt, and Mexico already import much of their grain. With its population outgrowing its water supply, Pakistan too may soon turn to world markets for grain. The Middle East and North Africa from Morocco in the west through Iran in the east, has become the world's fastest growing grain import market. The demand for grain is driven both by rapid population growth, and by rising affluence, much of the latter from the export of oil. With virtually every country in the region pressing against its water limits, the growing urban demand for water can be satisfied only by taking irrigation water from agriculture. Egypt, with some 75 million people, has become a major importer of wheat in recent years, vying with Japan traditionally the leading wheat importer for the top spot. It now imports close to 40% of its total grain supply, a dependence that reflects a population that is outgrowing the grain harvest produced with the Nile's water. Algeria, with 34 million people, imports well over half of its grain. Overall, the water required to produce the grain and other farm products imported into the Middle East and North Africa last year approached the annual flow of the Nile River to Swan. In effect, the region's water deficit can be thought of as another Nile flowing into the region in the form of imported food. It is often said that future wars in the Middle East will more likely be fought over water than oil, but in reality the competition for water is taking place in world grain markets. The countries that are financially the strongest, not necessarily those that are militarily the strongest, will fare best in this competition. Knowing where grain deficits will be concentrated tomorrow requires looking at where water deficits are developing today. Thus far, the countries importing much of their grain have been smaller ones. Now we are looking at fast-growing water deficits in both China and India, each with more than a billion people. As noted earlier, overpumping is a way of satisfying growing food demand that virtually guarantees a future drop in food production when aquifers are depleted. Many countries are in essence creating a food bubble economy one which food production is artificially inflated by the unsustainable mining of groundwater. At what point does water scarcity translate into food scarcity? David Settler and his colleagues at the International Water Management Institute, the world's premier water research group, summarized this issue well. Many of the most populous countries of the world China, India, Pakistan, Mexico, and nearly all the countries of the Middle East and North Africa have literally been having a free ride over the past two or three decades, by depleting their groundwater resources. The penalty for mismanagement of this valuable resource is now coming due, and it is no exaggeration to say that the results could be catastrophic for these countries, and, given their importance, for the world as a whole. Since expanding irrigation helped triple the world grain harvest from 1950 to 2000, it comes as no surprise that water losses can shrink harvests. With water for irrigation, many countries are in a classic overshoot and decline mode. If countries that are overpumping do not move quickly to raise water use efficiency and stabilize water tables, then an eventual drop in food production may be inevitable. Water scarcity yields political stresses. We typically measure well-being in economic terms, in income per person. But water well-being is measured in cubic meters or tons of water per person. 
a country with an annual supply of 1,700 cubic meters of water per person, is well supplied with water, able to comfortably meet agricultural, industrial, and residential uses. Below this level, stresses begin to appear. When water supply drops below 1,000 cubic meters per person, people face scarcity. Below 500 cubic meters, they face acute scarcity. At this level people are suffering from hydrological poverty or living without enough water to produce food, or, in some cases, even for basic hygiene. The world's most severe water stresses are found in North Africa and the Middle East. While Morocco and Egypt have fewer than 1,000 cubic meters per person per year, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya have fewer than 500. Some countries, including Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Kuwait, and Israel, have less than 300 cubic meters per person per year. A number of sub-Saharan countries are also facing water stress, including Kenya and Rwanda. While national averages indicate an adequate water supply in each of the world's three most populous countries China, India, and the United States regions within these countries also suffer from acute water shortages. Water is scarce throughout the northern half of China. In India, the northwestern region suffers extreme water scarcity. For the United States, the southwestern states from Texas to California are experiencing acute water shortages. Although the risk of international conflict over water is real, so far there have been remarkably few water wars. Water tensions tend to build more within societies, particularly where water is already scarce, and population growth is rapid. Recent years have witnessed conflicts over water in scores of countries. Perhaps the most common of these is the competition described earlier between cities and farmers, particularly in countries like China, India, and Yemen. In other countries the conflicts are between tribes, as in Kenya, or between villages, as in India and China, or upstream and downstream water users, as in Pakistan or China. In some countries local water conflicts have led to violence and death, as in Kenya, Pakistan, and China. In Pakistan's arid southwest province of Balochistan, water tables are falling everywhere as a fast-growing local population swelled by Afghan refugees is pumping water far faster than aquifers can recharge. The provincial capital of Quetta, as noted earlier, is facing a particularly dire situation. Nasa Farakwi, a researcher at Canada's International Development Research Center, describes the situation facing Quetta, with over a million people living there now, many of whom are Afghan refugees, the possibility of confrontation over decreasing water resources, or even mass migration from the city, is all too real. Not far to the west, Iraq is concerned, that dam building on the Euphrates River in Turkey, and, to a lesser degree, Syria will leave it without enough water to meet its basic needs. The flow into Iraq of the Euphrates River, which gave birth to the ancient Sumerian civilization, has shrunk by half over the last few decades. Another water flashpoint involves the way water is divided between Israelis and Palestinians. A UN report notes that nowhere are the problems of water governance as starkly demonstrated, as in the occupied Palestinian territories. Palestinians experience one of the highest levels of water scarcity in the world. But the flashpoint is as much over inequity in the distribution of water as it is over scarcity. The Israeli population is roughly double that of the Palestinians, but it gets seven times as much water. As others have noted, peace in the region depends on a more equitable distribution of the region's water. Without this, the peace process itself may dry up. At the global level, most of the projected population growth of nearly 3 billion by 2050 will come in countries where water tables are already falling. The states most stressed by the scarcity of water tend to be those in arid and semi-arid regions, with fast-growing populations and a resistance to family planning. Many of the countries high on the list of failing states are those, where populations are outrunning the water supplies, among them Sudan, Iraq, Somalia, Chad, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Yemen. Unless population can be stabilized in these countries. The continually shrinking supply of water per person will put still more stress on already overstressed governments. Although spreading water shortages are intimidating, we have the technologies needed to raise water use efficiency, the spying time to stabilize population size. Prominent among these technologies are those for more water efficient irrigation, 
industrial water recycling, and urban water recycling, as discussed in chapters 9 and 10.